You know, it's kind of interesting perspective kids have sometimes, you know. But uh, we moved on from that. Uh, we ran with that for probably three or four years, and then uh, Hardy's wanted, you know, we wanted more money, and they wanted to, you know, do something else, new sandwiches, and it, so it was a mutual, no big deal, we'll go our way, you know, because we're looking to gain, and they were looking to stand still, and that's not what we wanted to do. So we ran our Terra Duster back again for a while, and then we were approached by the WWF to run one of their trucks. And the reason they approached us was because we did have the image, you know, which was very important, you know. I mean, showing up with clean trucks and race suits and everything, you know, you're showing up with a package. That, that's going to get you sponsored faster than anything. You know, we continued on with that. Uh, we struck a deal with Brett Hitman Hart, and um, he fully supported the truck. And we, we started doing some venues in Canada as a result. He's from Calgary. And, uh, you know, that was cool. He came to the shows, and that was kind of a, a weird thing. You know, at first, when they first approached me with this WWF talk, I, I really didn't see the connection at all. You know, but I guess, you know, after hindsight, you look at it, you know, these are both entertainment-type industries, wrestling, monster trucks. True, we race, you know, and all that, but in competition and freestyle. But it's still a show, a spectacle. And I think, you know, people come to see the crash and uh, they enjoy it. And, you know, it's amazing it's gone on this long. The last truck we had uh, was a Stone Cold Steve Austin truck. And I got to tell you, that thing was bad. I mean, we had top horsepower, brand new parts, whatever we wanted. You know, the only thing was that we tore that truck up every weekend. You know, it, it just... Um, you know, we blew up two thirty thousand dollar motors in one year, and you know, so that's pretty hard on the budget. But yeah. if you're going to run at that level, you know, in those days, my competition was Gravedigger and Bigfoot. I mean, they I was put up against those guys, and they expected me to win. You know, and it's a lot of pressure. I understand how you know, like Dennis Anderson and Tom Mentz and those guys. It's kind of a two-edged sword that they've created for themselves. Yes, they're very popular, but look at what they have to do to, to satisfy their fans, you know. And I, I experienced some of that, you know. I remember many mornings waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning and feeling the holler bouncing around, and there's Stone Cold Steve Austin fans out there, you know, taking pictures, <laughs> having a good time. So, you know, we really enjoyed it. It was a, a cool thing to do for a long time. Met a lot of really great people. Um, have no regrets really. Now let's talk about uh, your exit from the sport. Uh, about what year was this and what were some of the reasons that you guys decided to go ahead and retire? Well, uh, you know, like I said, we, we'd been on the road for about 20 years and um, although people think it's glamorous, you know, all these big stadiums and everything, you know, the glamorous part is pretty small. Yeah. You know, it's a couple hours, you know, maybe eight hours a weekend, something like that. The rest of the time, is, it's a job you know, to make sure you're ready for the next show. You know, you gotta have the right parts, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it is a business and you have to run it that way. And um, we were successful at it. And after being on the road for 20 years or so, I had an opportunity to uh, sell my truck and move over more to the business side. Uh, Motorsports Entertainment Group hired me to fly in and, and build tracks and you know, being a bank coordinator and that kind of stuff. And I really thought that was going to be my niche. And uh, so I went in that direction. We sold the truck. Uh, it was a fluky thing. This guy just called me out of nowhere. He was a Mopar nut. He knew my truck kind of had the rumor out that it was for sale. Uh, he asked me how much. I told him. He said, fine. You know, I was like, ah, she said more. But, uh, you know, it, we didn't look back. We delivered the truck. We did our last show, and, and we went off doing this other stuff. And then MEG was bought out by, at that time, Clear Channel. And uh, so they, you know, I, all my work for them stopped. Now, I did have an opportunity to go work for Clear Channel or Live Nation, as it is now. Uh, but it involves traveling. And that's something I can't do because of my early days in the monster truck. 
Now let's uh, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, it's one of the reasons why you're here this weekend and why we were lucky enough to run into you for the interview. Uh, one of the things you're doing at shows that come near your area is getting around and talking to the, the drivers that are out there now about safety and about you know ensuring that they're taking the proper precautions. Oh, absolutely. You know, in my day, we had the best that we had then. You know, I wore the big neck collar. I had the helmet restraints. I wore a kidney belt, full fire suit, you know, five-point harness, good suspension seat. But, you know, that was the best then. And um, as a result of those early days, you know, my spine really took a pounding. And um, about five years after I retired from Monster Trucks in 1999, all of a sudden I started having back problems. And uh, like in the past, you know, being young and oh, I can handle it, I, I didn't handle it right. And uh, as a result, I'm totally disabled now. I have a lot of titanium in me. I've had a lot of surgeries. And uh, you know, my point to come to these shows is it's difficult to convince somebody that uh, they need to look down the road a little bit from what they're doing now. And most of the time, you know, these young guys that are driving now, hey, I was one at one time, could conquer the world, you know? And uh, they don't wanna listen to you because who are you to tell me? And that's one place I feel like I have a little bit of an edge because I was right exactly where they are now. And they have a benefit of better suspended trucks and better seats and Hans devices and things that we didn't have that benefit back then. So I like to come to shows that are close by because I am disabled, I can't travel very far, but I can come to shows and I take time to go around and talk to all the drivers and not preach to them, but just kind of tell them my situation and how I ended up here. And, and if I can help that way, you know, well, that's cool because I've been out of the industry for a long time. You know, I've been asked to drive many trucks and um, you know, I can't do that anymore. So, you know, I, it was kind of weird to be out of the industry totally, but know so much about it. And uh, I thought this would be kind of a cool way. And I ran into you guys this weekend and here we are, you know, so nothing ventured, nothing gained. If there's a will, there's a way, right? Sure, and uh, you know, on that note, we can't thank you enough for taking some time to sit down with us and for all the fans out there that check out the Monster Blog and TMB TV to share your stories and you know, share some of this photo and video history that we've been presenting throughout the interview. Uh, just amazing that you would do that for us and uh, uh, we appreciate that. And we also appreciate what you're doing you know, for the drivers that come near shows near you. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, it's something that really started off as just an idea I had kind of like my monster truck when uh, way back when when I put big tires on it. And I, you know, at first I thought it was kind of a stupid idea, you know, and then as I've been talking to different drivers and I, you know, I'm still in contact with, with people that I used to race with, the Dennis Andersons, those people. And, um, you know, I try and tell them what's going on with me so they can avoid it. And uh, I really didn't think I, I would have any place to do this, but after talking to you guys, you gave me a little bit of a forum here. And, uh, you know, if, if anybody out there is interested, they're having problems, you know, with their back or their neck or anything like that, and they really don't know what to do, you know, take my case as an example and, uh, you know, just get, get your butt to the doctor when you hurt. I know some weekends, you know, you hurt every weekend, and I can understand that. It's like being in a traffic accident every weekend. But, you know, if you're getting symptoms that aren't right and you know are not right, catch it early and a lot of times uh, if it leads to a surgery like in my case it'll be successful you know I had I had a surgery on my neck two discs had to come out because of the Jim Cramer thing hanging out the window but I knew what it was from the agony I went through with my back and I went straight to the doctor they fixed it and I'm fine now if, if I would have done that early with my back I would if I would have had somebody that could have told me that you know, maybe I wouldn't be disabled and maybe I would be out there chasing all these guys around because uh, the old Terror Duster was one bad truck and everybody knows it. And uh, I'm sure if they saw it again, they would probably think, oh boy, that old Wheeler guy's back again. So unfortunately, that's not something that's going to happen though. 
Well, folks, that's Mark Wheeler. He's uh, one of the originators of the sport. Uh, Terra Duster, one of the names everyone knows from way back when. And uh, we just can't thank him enough for sitting down, sharing some history with all of the fans out there and with us. And uh, also for giving some of the current drivers and teams in the industry something to think about as they go through their uh, careers. Uh, we've got a lot more action coming up for you right here on TMB TV. Thanks again, Mark. You bet. Thank you.